this presentation, we'll be discussing the development of different styles within kids' TV animation shows and video games. I'm going to confine my discussion to the evolution of stop-motion techniques and CGI. The innovations in computer animation have allowed these developments. Let's start off with kids' TV animations. Most TV shows were based on storybooks for children and merchandise toys. Once they were adapted to television, the programs were firstly produced with stop motion, which includes puppets, clothes, materials, and painted sets. By 2005 onwards, the modern techniques evolved to mouths that move along with the dialogue. Shows like Noddy, Fireman Sam, Postman Pat, Bob the Builder, as well as some others, make the viewers think that watching the show is like looking at characters from a toy world. These days, it's done with CGI. Dean Burnett of The Guardian writes, I know CGI is all the rage and offers more scope than other techniques, but it's so omnipresent these days that cheap, less CGI becomes more noticeable. For some animations originally done with stop motion, the characters will be computer generated for the new series rather than created using stop motion animation. All the characters blend together into an appealing mixture of fun and entertainment for children everywhere. But viewers of the original series don't always agree. Some of the characters have changed in appearance and now blend together, and there are some general atmosphere changes to the background. Viewers notice many differences on screen. For example, Dean Burnett of The Guardian said whilst talking about Fireman Sam, Whoever it is that makes the modern Fireman Sam, they certainly are no Pixar. The latest incarnation takes this to extremes though. Sam now looks and sounds more like a stripper who happens to be wearing the Fireman's outfit for this particular booking. This shows how the design and personality of the main character has changed from the original to the revived version. Let's move on to the LEGO video games. The name LEGO is an abbreviation of the two Danish words LIGOT, meaning play well, which is also Latin of I put together. LEGO has become a modern global enterprise and have come a long way since it was founded in 1932. It has allowed children to have many creative ideas and imaginative play. By the late 1990s, LEGO Creator was developed. In this game, the player could play more digital, customized figures around a virtual world. But it wasn't by 2005 that Traveller's Tales produced the first LEGO video game based on the set which was based on the film franchise, Star Wars. Rather than stick to the traditional yellow skin aspect, the makers decided to have the characters have natural skin colour, to make the series more realistic. The game takes the players through the epic story events, reimagining the stories with the humour and endless variety of LEGO play. The game also includes music and voice acting taken from all of the three films of the film trilogy. However, some scenes from the films have been altered to become more family friendly. After the success of the Star Wars games, Traveller's Tales continued to produce more video games based on film franchises, including Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course, Batman. During production, the character designs have been improved. For example, they've now gone a long way from flat hair to a more molded quiffs and curls. Other changes include more detailed clothes and improved background special effects and dialogue. In 2012, LEGO Batman 2 was the first game that the LEGO series was to feature full voice acting, as opposed to the mime acting grunts, mumbles, and gibberish of the previous titles. Are those last names? Just one name each, like Madonna. 
The game was well received with critics praising its refined gameplay, story, and voice acting. It was also one of the first LEGO games to have the gameplay characters be able to roam free around the LEGO world between each level and story arc. A year later, Traveller's Tales decided to make another game, based on another film franchise, Lord of the Rings. This game also included dialogue, but the dialogue was actually taken from the films itself. You must understand, the ring is my burden. This was before the LEGO set of the series was merchandised. This is an example of how the development in animation can result in the production of merchandise driven by market resources. You shall not pass! It seems like a good thing in the development of the game's world, because the experience of playing the game is far more realistic and enjoyable as it is in the real world. But the LEGO characters children loved playing are transformed to the computer screen, which has removed the toy aspect from them. LEGO is a good example of how the LEGO company takes the image of a popular film franchise, cartoon series or TV show, and stylizes the characters into their own LEGO image. With animation techniques developing all the time, the style is going to evolve along with it. Once it's gone CGI, you can no longer physically hold the character. If the animation is developed using stop motion, you can imagine physically manipulating the character, but this cannot happen in CGI. So, is the idea of developing the styles of animation a good idea? Well, yes and no. The good things about developing the styles is for the companies to introduce an original series to a new generation. The style of the design and movement has improved, making the shows more easier to produce with computers rather than drawing a lot of images or taking a lot of photos. It manages to keep up to date with reality, for instance from the countryside to the big city. However, the problems are that too much changes can be a bad idea to some viewers of the original series, and sometimes CGI could destroy the spirit of a childhood story. We are still convinced that only the best is good enough, because children deserve the best. What do you think? Do you agree?